Hello and welcome to the White's PMV podcast where I, Soraz, and one other guest talk about anything and everything White's PMV. This is episode 4 featuring M Maker. M Maker is relatively new to the scene but has increasingly become more and more prominent through the years with his stunning visual work and community efforts. He helped host the third Octagon Club, the glorious Octagon of Destiny, and also is behind the White's PMV screen bot on Twitter, which posts the White's PMV every half hour. Please go check out his website, mmaker.pw, and follow him on Twitter. Thanks for tuning in, and enjoy the podcast. Alright, so, I'm gonna start it off the same way I've started off everything else. How'd you get into White's PMV? Uh, so before getting into White's PMV, or like, even really knowing what it was, uh, I got, like, I just knew about YTP at the time, I think early as, or late as, as some might say, in 2012. Um, uh, there's a lot of YTPs I watched during that time, but uh, some of the ones that stick out the most to me were, um, I don't know if you've heard of these, I, I think you would have, uh, Gaston's Ultimate Mission to Obtain Some Taco Bell by yeah. Waxinator. That one's so yeah. good. Um, and then Aladdin and the Stupid Princess by Hothi. 1138, that's another one I remember well. Uh, but yeah, I just didn't really know about YTPMV at the time until I started uh, seeing some other videos like uh, Patrick Zone, and that's also around the time when I saw Big Beat Mario. Real classic. Yeah. Uh, and also when I saw one of my first Otomads I think I ever watched, the uh, Ronald McDonald Insanity Mickroll video. Oh yeah, that one's good. Mm-hmm. Classic. Uh, so yeah, I just I sort of knew about those videos. I didn't really like know about uh the people making them or anything. Um, and it wasn't until years later where I was like, you know, maybe I maybe I can try making uh just a YTP at the time because I still didn't really know there was this whole YTP and V thing either. So I made this really awful video uh like two years later in 2014 called pac-man 3 confirmed it's <laughs> it, it's still on my youtube channel i haven't watched it in years because i know it's so bad <laughs> it was made in the the new version of windows movie maker too which like doesn't have the oh god the like the proper timeline or anything like it has that really weird like where it's all on the right side and it's like just huge thumbnails and everything, just really, yeah. <laughs> really yeah. terrible. Uh, but yeah, so I made that and then I was like, "All right, this is awful. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do from here." So, kind of didn't really make anything after that. Uh, and it wasn't until uh, this is like kind of the game changer for me when I first saw this video was Super Spice Brothers 2 by Mountain Dew, which I'm sure that's how a lot of people got into YTPMV and Otomad 2 was from Mountain Dew or just any of the videos he has done. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like, when I first saw that video, like, I was just going crazy. Like, my mind was blown. I <laughs> I tried to show it to some of my family. They didn't give a crap. <laughs> but, yeah, just... Man, just when I first saw that video, like that was just man, crazy. Yeah, that that video that video is like incredibly good, and the fact that like it just blew up, and I'm sure like like you said, that was like a lot of people's first impressions of White's PMV of like a newer generation. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Like even yeah. like I think Menorah on Fire, who's like friends of Do, like I think that was even how he first found do if i'm if i'm not mixing up my memory i think that's how i found him but yeah so yeah and it was around that time too when i saw first saw eight awesome angles on youtube and the the weird story about that though is when i first saw that video i think it was sometime in late 2014 it's like a year after it came out uh i was watching like the first few minutes of it and i'm like yeah this is this is pretty cool like kind of had the same feel as Super Spice Brothers 2 to me and but for whatever reason like I, I was a few minutes into watching it I guess I just downloaded the audio and then I never finished watching the rest of the video I don't know why to this day <laughs> I cuz I just remember like 
I download the audio. I put it on my iPod Shuffle. I just listen to the audio like every day. I I didn't watch the visuals or the rest of the video or anything. I don't know why. That's funny. Yeah, it wasn't until like a year later, I think, when I actually sat down. I had the attention span to watch it at that time, and <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So, so what year? What year was that then that you watched? I think late 2014 was when I watched it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just saw I was on some form for uh this other community I was part of years ago. Uh yeah. I, just, I just saw someone post that and like, dang. So that was sort of my intro first introductions to YTPMB and it was after that that I kind of learned there was more to it like I, I one day I just came across some one of French Cakes YTP and V compilations. That was like another, uh, like introduction to me of what it was all about. So yeah, but yeah, then... that 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 really will open your eyes when it's like a huge variety. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and at this time I still didn't even like I honestly didn't even know about some of the really like people have that have been in this community for a long time like. Omni or Phazon, like I or even you, like I didn't even know these people existed. I sort of just knew of like the surface level and like the big names in the community, like Do and like I meant just the collaborations too. Like I didn't really know about all these other videos and stuff that existed at the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that then then going into 2015. I still haven't made YTP and Visa at this point. I found um found out the the rabbit hole which is Jontron YTP and Vs. <laughs> and for whatever yeah. reason I got super into those and you know, Sup Dog four four four, he has all yeah. those videos using the same source, like <laughs> Yeah, for me that was a big thing back then. Yeah. That was that was crazy when it and back in 2013 when they were just all coming out. Yeah, yeah, 2013, 2014. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I was kind of late. Still, and then he still made one this year. He made a, a crocodile cacophony one in 2019, yeah. or yeah. maybe it was late 2018. I think, yeah, I think anyway. it was 2018. Yeah, I saw that. That but, was that was cool to see. Yeah. So fast forward now to I guess 2020 now. Like, do you still feel pretty new to the community then? Uh, like honestly, I do, and it's only because I've really gotten to learn about the other people in the community, like within the last year or so, mm -hmm. or like last two years. So yeah, like there, there's there's so much that I learn. Like it feels like I learn a new thing about the community every day that was like a thing in the past, and like I'm just now learning about it. But I, yeah. you know, it's just because, like, you know, I started so late. Like, I didn't really get into all this until I want to say like 2016 or 2017 is when I was like, when I first got invited to a collaboration. That's how I met a lot of people and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Do do collabs help with like feeling new, like meeting all these people and everything? Yeah, like collabs, like getting to meet a lot of people is like one of the one of my favorite things about them at least when i started because uh before collaborations like uh or like really before talking to people in the community like it always felt like um like everyone was kind of just uh unreachable like in a way just because of like because i i looked up to a, a lot of people's stuff and like thought like <coughs> like kind of idolize them in some way which later i found out like these are just these are just all normal people like mm -hmm. you know they're just they're just making this stuff for fun just like i am kind of the same yeah thing. yeah like that that was really humbling to find out like uh probably like my first realization about that when i when i was um was when i was talking the kinky oats about octagon collaboration stuff like just hearing how like this was all like um how do i explain it it's just it's just weird when it's something you looked up to for so long like the octagon collab mm -hmm. like seeing all those people in it like they put 
together is such amazing video in my mind and like they're just they're just normal people when you talk to them it's just yeah yeah it's just crazy no i totally get what you mean and like uh that that definitely also relates to magfest and like being able to meet everybody oh yeah absolutely like yeah so so nice to meet everyone there like put a face to everyone and yeah. and just be able to talk to them yeah it's crazy so speaking of octagon collabs uh so obviously the last octagon collab was mm -hmm. this past year and it was fucking amazing <laughs> uh, i think i think everybody was really pleased with it um even if there was like you know a little like no it's it's great but uh so you ended up hosting it uh so how'd you end up getting that role yeah so it was late 2017 um one day just marlon messages me out of nowhere saying hey i think the octagon collab is gonna be happening next year and you're gonna be part of it and that that was super exciting for me um and then it was a few months later in early 2018 where he just i guess he saw my interest in the source or something so he's like hey do you want to help post the collab i'm like sure heck yeah let's do it so yeah it was just i guess marlon saw that i was interested in working on it and it was d pritch kinky oats moy and marlon that were all hosting at the time so i was the the last one to come on to all that so yeah it was okay. just marlon messaged me and that's history that's cool so like in in your mind like what were some of the ups and downs of hosting it because have you had had you hosted any big collabs before this no and that's like the crazy thing like this is my first time hosting a collab and that's like crazy when this is when it's the collab like your dream collab kind of like yeah, I, yeah. I, i've always especially of that scale yeah especially that scale yeah because it's just the like a collab i always wanted to happen ever since i saw the the awesome angles of youtube so yeah that was my first first collab ever hosted um ups and downs though uh Really, there wasn't a lot of downs, I'd say. I I think it's funny with collabs, especially like large scale ones like this where you're everyone's like trying to take them really seriously. Is that really the only thing you have to try to do in these collabs is get people to work on their parts yeah. to finish them. And I'm not really I'm not too familiar with how other like small YTP and V collabs work, but I assume it's like the same way. Like it's just get your part done and then we can upload this. Yeah, basically. It's like set a deadline. The deadline comes, only half the people are done. You <laughs> yeah, extend the yeah. deadline and then hopefully most of the people get it done by then. And then it gets yeah, uploaded and, we... and then people are like, oh shit, my part's so old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was that was kind of the same thing of Octagon Collab is. Even when I made my part, because I was like one of the first few people to finish, and like a year later, the collab comes out, and it's like, shoot, I really could have done a lot more in this. Yeah. But yeah, like I don't know, there wasn't there wasn't really a lot of downs, honestly. Like for hosting for my, for being the first collab I hosted and also like kind of participated in, like I'd only participated really briefly in a few other collabs before this. Like there wasn't really a lot of downs besides just. We we set like three different deadlines and none of those deadlines got met. And it's like, go go work on your part. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, ups like it. It was just fun to work on. Honestly, like getting to help everyone with their parts and everything. Like, yeah, like honestly, that's for being the first club I host. I think it went pretty well. Oh yeah, definitely. The fact the fact that you still met your uh August 8th deadline and all that and it turned out pretty I mean, in the end, yeah, we yeah. did meet the deadline. Uh shout out to Leno's actually. Leno's came on to really push for that deadline in 2019 yeah. to get it out on August 8th. Yeah. That's cool. Considering like the first two octagon collabs were years ago six seven years ago it's like mm -hmm. it's pretty unfair to like compare them uh like apples to apples but 
how do you think it stacks up to the legacy of the Nico Nico and the YouTube ones? Uh, I mean, yeah, it is kind of hard to compare them since they're so old, but, and especially, like, it's like, how do you, a lot of people were just like, how do you top the second one? Because yeah. to just a lot of us, that was like sort of the peak for that kind of collab. Um, like, in my mind, I think there's uh, some things that are better for each of them. Like, the, the second one, I think had, I think it had like a better flow to the medley, I think. Yeah. Uh, like, the second, or the third one. The third one had like, was like non-stop, but the second one had like a few more slower parts and like, it just feels like it kind of paced better. But uh, the third one, I definitely think uh, surpasses in visual quality. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think even like some of the like jokes that got thrown in are like funnier, like the the Wazgul is gay and like the Eric Andre bit, like especially Zarables and Leno's, Leno's part, the Super Paper Mario. That oh, one that really one, yeah, it. that one's really good. <laughs> yeah, just all those little jokes that Zar put in the audio. So uh, were were those jokes planned at all, or were they kind of planned out beforehand? So yeah, some of them. So here's the interesting thing about the the collab is before everyone could start working on their parts, we had everyone make a storyboard for it. I think that took about two weeks in total, and that's probably where most of the jokes came up was just during that initial planning. So like, Sergeant Scrub Noob is the one that came up with the Eric Andre joke, and like, when he was making his the one thing he's like, this has to be in this part. This has to be in here <laughs> <laughs> it was it was so good and yeah it, i mean it's really good too because it's like uh octagon is just one of those sources where it, it's the same source usually used over and over again so like it's really nice to see like other jack black and sesame street sources thrown in just mm -hmm. give it more variety how did the how did the f-zero gotcha joke get in there oh my goodness okay so <laughs> <laughs> Menorah is, if it wasn't obvious enough, Menorah was the one that came up with that idea. Um, when he, and he's really, um, do, he does things last second. So like, uh, this was during, I think, we, when we were coming up on the second deadline for December. He sends me the audio like a few weeks before then. And it's like, I don't, I don't know if we can put this in because... <laughs> <laughs> and I think beforehand too, it was like way more vulgar. Like he used like like Jack actually swearing and stuff. Like oh yeah, yeah, yeah from one of the, like the tenacious or tenacious. Yeah, yeah, ones. I think so. Yeah. It, it's kind of fuzzy I, for me. I'd have to go back and look, but yeah, like it's like, can we even put this in? <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, he just had that idea from the very start, just because it's big blue and like the whole joke with that is the big Yaju thing from Inmu. Yeah. Yeah, but that was just another another joke that like came up during planning and just stuck. I well, I I I think like so like especially that joke just came out of nowhere. And it was like, <laughs> I don't know. They they I feel like that they added so much to the collab to make it more memorable. Oh yeah. That it wasn't just like, you know, it just wasn't like pure like you you know how you watch a video and like somebody who's ma who makes white pmvs is like damn this is really impressive mm -hmm. but it's not really all that entertaining this this definitely like ticked off the entertainment mark yeah which you know you don't have to do but it it definitely helps no i mean honestly i uh when i first got into white pmvs the entertainment factor i guess really didn't matter as much to me but like over time it's like like now entertainment is all i watch it for because before it was um I like seeing how all these visuals are done. Like I didn't know how to make these visuals at the time, these crazy visuals. But over time, like as I learned how to make them, like now I'm just interested in like, you know, the humor of it or like storytelling in it. Like the visual quality isn't as much as a factor to me anymore as it used to be. So yeah, like entertainment is like an absolute must for me now. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, before we stop talking about like octagon collab like uh 
So how do you how do you think it compares to Muscular Wonders? Because you worked on that as well, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I I did. Um, that's that just came out of nowhere too, because that was during when we were still working on Octagon Collab, and they just like needed some help to finish it. So um, yeah, Muscular Wonders. I think, hmm, in my opinion, that's a uh, that is a solid collab, especially for like being the first Old Spice collab. Um, mm -hmm. it's but it is like one of those collabs where it has like it's too focused on the flash of it, you know, like yeah, just too many parts that are like trying to be just cool or like it doesn't really have it doesn't fe always feel like it has a lot of thought put into it i guess and that's how some collabs are near the end because it's like like everyone wants to get the collab out and so people are trying to rush to get it done and so i think that's kind of where it comes from so it's not really it's not really necessarily intentional but yeah that's where i think it mm -hmm. comes from and that is one of the advantages of octagon and like why we made the coming never trailer is it's like it's gonna it's gonna come out when it's done and we're gonna like we're gonna put as much time as we need to in it so we can make it as good as we need to make it so yeah 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 it was kind of nice just having like those little videos just as a reminder like oh it's it's coming <laughs> don't worry but say you were to host another collab or re-host the same octagon collab and like knowing what you do now after that like is there anything else that you would do differently uh, get on people's asses to finish their parts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but bes much. besides that, um, uh, I kind of learned a lot during that collab about um critiquing parts, like like things that should be changed, or, like things you could add to it to make it better. Cause um, Kinky Oats and Marlon especially, they have like some of the best feedback, like. Like I've heard in um, just on like making collabs, cause like I don't know, some people in some hosts in some collaborations don't really care about the parts as much, and they're they just like accept submissions as they come, and like I I'm kind of not like that, like, and that's how like Kinky Oats and Marlon are, is like if it's even really something really minor, they're like this should probably be changed, and like here's things you should you could do to change it. Yeah, but, and it's also and it's also just like knowing how to word the critique as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in in the Octagon collab, like that was one of the one problems with it was Kinky Oats and Marlon weren't always around, and so it was just me critiquing stuff. And like whenever they came in, it was like super helpful though to have them. So yeah, that that was. That would probably be the only thing I'd change is just a little more planning and like having more people to have um critiqued the parts like because there's some parts where uh looking back I think they could have been better after like hearing what uh the rest of the group has to say and like hearing what even people outside the community have said about the collab like Especially like the super hexagon part, I think, in my opinion, that's probably the least lacking part, and it's probably just because the uh, the way the because it's meant to have like a little story going on in it, but it's not very clear, and that's yeah, just partially because like it's the the composition for the three D scenes aren't that great, and yeah, just that that would be probably the only thing i changed is just a little more planning a little more having more people to critique everyone's work it's funny that you mentioned needing more planning because that's probably like one of the or some of the most planning that people have done for a watch pmv collab oh yeah i mean definitely like the even like the participation or invitation sheet we sent out had like a bunch of questions on it for like everyone we are inviting so like we know like we wanted to try to have everyone on the same page for the collab and i think that uh invitation sheet that marlon put together and sent to everyone was really helpful because it had like questions about what do you think is most important and like 
uh like just in a collaboration part um how do you work like do you do you usually wait to the last second so like some of these things we kind of knew beforehand would come up yeah uh and it also had a song selection on it where people voted they didn't vote for um if they want the the song in they voted for if they want to work on the song which i think was super useful Cause, oh yeah because then it yeah. was like uh then the people who got the work on their part would actually want the work on it and it wasn't necessarily that they want it in it's if if they want to work on it and it did balance out to where like we got everyone working on the part they wanted to so that worked out really well oh that's cool mm -hmm. so um this kind of branches off so when when we were talking to uh you and i were at magfest we were talking to omni yeah. about like the octagon collab and uh iwf and some of these he kind of called them like a like a automad and white's pmv like merge he called them like a hybrid collab i don't know if he coined that term but yeah yeah do you do you prefer a mix of both of them in a collab or just in a normal video or do you think maybe they should be a bit more separated um i mean i feel like it depends because there's kind of there's kind of factors i like in both of them like kind of the the separation i see in ytp and automed is ytpmv seems to be at, at its core like just uh funny sources um like a lot of uh like just random sources in general um mm -hmm. And there isn't really a focus on, I guess, like, lore to them or something. Like, in Odomad, you have several large sources with, like, tons of material, like Gachi, Muchi, and Inmu, Battle Dome, Shuzo. Like, there's all these sources, and they have so much material behind them. And, like, YT, YTP and YTPMB is just sort of, like, throw whatever yeah at, yeah it's just a video and throw whatever you got put something together and just make it funny yeah and like oh man i feel like two does kind of take itself like more seriously kind of like i realize like a lot of people take ytp and ytp and b seriously but like i don't know they it's a different way they take it seriously like the visuals and audio quality like seem to be more important in oh man which I, I can appreciate but i still enjoy the the really fast and like unpolished kind of nature of YTPMV, like, like kind of mm -hmm. like the videos you make, like the, I mean, your videos and Phazons, like those, <laughs> those inspire me so much just because of how it's just so fast paced and like it's random, but there's still like thought behind of kind, thought behind it kind of. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, I think I think there's definitely a lot more thought behind Phazon and Gertrude's videos. <laughs> Like yeah. they're like those those two to me are like the kings of like that kind of YTP and V, and um as well as like Ray to a certain oh yeah but not like they're they're almost like a little bit different in just like the kind of joke videos they make, but mm -hmm. I mean man I, I honestly I love those joke videos yeah it there's definitely a place for both yeah. But I, I, I just thought it was interesting. Like, I guess I'd never thought of them being, like, just considered hybrid collabs. I, I think they're, they're definitely, like, um, how do I want to say it? They're definitely very appealing. They please both sides. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. whether, whether you like Odomads or whether you like white mm -hmm. Yeah, but, I, think, um, I think there's things that each side can take up from them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just you, you gotta you can you just can't overdo it. Yeah. Like you just can't you just can't add like every single effect under the sun and just see what happens. Yeah, Which, and I mean that's the thing. I I feel like collabs nowadays sometimes put too much effort into like the visuals and audio, like over over time I just feel like those have become less important to me and it's more about just, just make it fun and like put some more thought to it into it yeah mm -hmm. it's kind of how i am and that is one of the one of the problems i have with the newer iws is 
or national wrestling festivals is the old ones seem to have just more fun of it, and now the new ones, it's it like kind of feels lifeless. But I don't know. It's it's hard to say because I, I in the end I still overall enjoy it, but it's like. Looking back to the old collabs, it's like, the, the, I mean, this could be more. There could be more for, especially for the, like, YTPMD side of it, because, you know, yeah. it's, but I guess um, the new collabs also just have a lot more Automad, like, that side of people working on it. Like, even mm -hmm. the, the new IWF, there was, like, several Japanese people in it. Yeah. Going back to the Octagon Club, I, I can't remember, but were there uh, any Japanese ma uh, MAD or YTPMV makers who worked on it? Or was uh, it pretty much just mostly like uh, there Western? There was at one point um, the big blue part when we were... Minora wasn't going to be able to work on visuals for that. He was planning to, but couldn't. Um, so we went out of our way to find someone else to work on it, and I found this one Japanese visuals creator it seemed like he'd work well for the part um i tried inviting him he accepted he started working on the part then he starts posting videos and previews of his part the twitter like in public oh. i'm like i'm like no you can't do this you, sh you shouldn't <laughs> you shouldn't be doing this holy um, shit yeah he so then after that after i told him to stop uh, he stopped responding to my messages, and that was all we heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, we had we had we had zero Japanese participants. We almost had one, but yeah, that's what that's what happened to them. <laughs> yeah, have you have you interacted much with uh, Japanese maker or like uh, Otomat or YTPMV creators? Uh, honestly, I haven't, and that's like another. I feel like that's another situation of where I'm just not really um I don't know how to approach them like Yeah, yeah. And it's also it's not it's not like uh you know like Kinky Oats where uh you know I'm sure a lot of a lot of them know of him or something. Yeah, I mean and then plus there's the language barrier and like yeah, I I don't know. Like I'd like to like to me, it'd be cool to work on a Japanese collab if that opportunity ever comes up. But it's, yeah, I'm just not very into the the Otomad community side of it. Like I'm more more into, you know, still the YTPMV side, the English speaking side of it. <laughs> like mm -hmm. when I can understand mm -hmm. everyone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's also tough because most of them use Nico Nico. Like Which, oh the website yeah oh yeah yeah no the source they only use Nico Nico ni <laughs> so <sighs> Magfest we'll we'll tackle this one Heck just yeah. a just a week ago we were there just Jeez. chilling chilling at the Gaylord um Gay. so <laughs> was it was it everything that you expected or did you even have like any expectations uh. I don't know. I really didn't have a lot of expectations, but it of like I guess the few I did, it met them and surpassed them. Um, like I I didn't do too much of the events at Magfest. Like I just sort of hanged out with people. But man, the the Siva Gunner panels, the rave, the Siva Gunner rave, that was yeah. awesome. Shout outs, shout outs the cryptic. Yeah, um, it was, and then shout outs to. One two three Z C for the fucking visuals. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah, <laughs> they're they're pretty good. That was, yeah, that was so good, man. So so yeah. many like little nods to the YTP and B community in there too. Yeah, because I mean, when you I mean basically when you think about it, Siva Gunner stems from SoundCloud, which mm -hmm. stems from YTP, and so like everybody who's been involved at different points. I mean, uh, very adjacent communities. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I I was the same way. Like I didn't really I I didn't look at the guidebook at all that <laughs> the entire Magfest, which really surprised me. I didn't have to. Um yeah, it was just crazy like how many more people came this year cuz this was my second one mm -hmm. and getting a hang out. But for sure like the Siva Gunner rave was definitely a highlight 
And um, how about the in, uh, impromptu YouTube poop panel? Yo, let's go. That was the <laughs> that might have been my favorite part, honestly. YouTube yeah. poop panel, man. Yeah, that that was so much better than I expected it be. Quite honestly. <laughs> me too <laughs> and and i think i think that's just more so a testament to how of how good um jab uh, and omni are are just like how passionate they are and how good that they are uh, just talking about the subject oh yeah definitely like way way better than <laughs> me honestly at talking about it yeah yeah and also yeah. the my favorite part of that panel was when the the Mario and Luigi cosplayers <laughs> walked in. They have no idea what's going on. That was so good. And, and we just all fucking lost it. <laughs> yeah, look out Look out for footage of that coming up. I don't know if it'll be out by the time this podcast episode is out, but uh, BeatStar recorded all of it, so should be up somewhere. But uh, yeah, so that that was definitely a highlight for the record i don't know if you if you knew but we did clear the air with some of the magfest staff because funny story um while we were sitting there i so basically i I'd, I'd gotten everybody together for a picture and then we we're like well fuck we may as well go to the soapbox and like take it over for a little bit <laughs> so we went to the soapbox and i said so i set a time and we all went there and it worked out beautifully. And then we found out that the girl who was running the soapbox was the same girl who ran our 1 a.m. YTP panel at MAGFest 2019. Oh, that's <laughs> who it was. Yeah, yeah, the same oh girl. And Jab, and Jab had been trying to get into contact with her for a long time, trying to get this all resolved. Because uh, we knew that she was on our side wanting this panel and everything. Mm -hmm. And so out of nowhere, this happens. And we're all fucking losing it. <laughs> so then afterwards... Um, Omni and Jab talked to them. They kind of cleared the air. Uh, so basically, like, my thoughts and my feeling about next year, you know, there won't be any concrete. Don't take my word for anything. But I feel, I definitely feel a lot better about it YouTube for next panel, year. 2021. Let's go. Yeah, fucking hopefully. So to, like, the other, like, people who maybe they're in the white 2 pmv community, maybe they're just watching it. Like what do you what what do you tell them if they're on the fence about coming to Magfest? Uh, if you have the financial means to go, I say go because, you know, yeah, it's fine if you don't know what to expect. That's kind of the, the that was the same boat I was in when I first went to my first con. Like I mean, this is my first Magfest, uh, but going to my first convention, like you just you yeah. don't know what to expect until you go. So it's like. You know, just try it out. And for me, like, and I assume like everyone else that's gone, it's never been a bad decision. You always have a great time there, mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. matter what convention it is. Yeah. And even yeah. even because my first convention, you know, like I try to go to the panels and everything, but like you know, like just meeting people there, especially at Magfest, you have like so many people from the community there. Like like even if I just got to meet up with people. That's yeah. that's completely worth it to me. So yeah, like if you if you can you can make it, definitely go. And p the everyone from the community is so nice and so 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 welcoming to everyone. So yeah, def definitely go if you have yeah. a chance. That's that's definitely one of the one of the like more eye opening things for me too was just like realizing how welcoming everybody was, and it, and it really helps that now we're all like you know adults yeah <laughs> and we're, we're we've all, all matured a shit ton <laughs> yeah yeah that, that helps a lot um but like yeah like building off that even even if like you don't care to meet up with everybody or like maybe you'll just go to like a couple panels or something there is still so much to do if you're in oh, yeah. if you're into rhythm games help fuck yeah you you can spend <laughs> you could easily spend the whole convention in the arcade just Agreed. playing free yeah. rhythm games Cause I know I know Grunku was really was really happy about <laughs> all the all the U beat there. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, got to play that and Tycho a lot there. Yeah, and didn't and didn't you say that like one of the one of the sticks broke or something? <laughs> yeah, one of the one of the Tycho machines for some reason it only had two sticks when it should have four. So you know we are using one stick in one hand and. <laughs> Just straight up are using our own hand for the other one. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't recommend. 
No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that it doesn't sound fun at all. Yeah. <laughs> so earlier you mentioned like storytelling and uh jokes, whether they be visual or audio. What would be the most important factors for you when making a video or what makes other videos stand out to you? Yeah, so for me, uh kinda going back to what I said earlier, uh there's usually like four factors or three factors, depending how you look at it. Uh, it'd be like storytelling or funniness, gags. Those would kind of be two or one, depending how you look at it. And then audio would come next for me. And then dead last, which is like kind of funny because that's what I consider myself to be the best at is visuals. Like to me, visuals is the the least important in the long run i think because uh you can like think of sun or like make something that's cool at the time visually that time period but like i don't know like over time that doesn't really last as long as like audio would like the and plus like audio is something where if you in my opinion if you mess it up then it kind of just take tears down the rest of the video like yeah yeah i agree off pitches or anything like that but um like overall the most important to me is just the entertainment value the, the storytelling if you have any like even my videos um i try to fit in a little story into it somehow like like when i worked on uh terry's athletic body wash on mountain dew's channel that there's a little part at the end where i just threw in like a little story in there like Terry goes into one of the airships and punches the guy. Yeah, so just that'd be kind of how I rank what's most important is storytelling, uh, gags, funniness of it, audio, and then visuals. Yeah, because uh, that's pretty much the most memorable bit is definitely like be like quoting something, how funny it is. Like mm -hmm. there there are quite a few videos where you could just think of it like. I, don't, I I tweeted about this, but at MAGFest, we probably watched, like, th collectively, like, 200 hours of THX Nightcore. <laughs> like, we watched so much THX Nightcore. And then just, like, just randomly just, like, coming up with a joke and just thinking about it. Like, that's definitely what's the most memorable part of Y2P. Yeah. And I feel like... Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like a lot of, like, especially this past year, a lot of people have been, like, missing out on that. Like, they've been... Like a lot of, a lot of creators have been focusing almost too much on visuals and audio, and it's 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 yeah, yeah. almost it's almost missing the point. But at the same time, it's this is such a niche community. You can't really tell people what you can and can't make. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, uh, that's kind of one of the things I really like about this community is in some ways, like you can. There's people that enjoy um, different things about it. Like, because when I first got into it, it was like kind of what I enjoyed about it was the over the top visuals paired with like this insanity of like audio and visuals and the jokes and everything. Like, but back then it was, you know, visuals are the most important to me. And now, nowadays, even though that's what I like focused working on was, uh, visuals and like how to improve on them and such now it's like turned around it's like i just want it to be funny now like i don't really care about the visual quality of it but i mean there's still people that you know they they want to be visually impressive or like audi audibly impressive you know like all the fake sample ytpmvs and all that like where you can just listen to the uh, the original song but you know like some people I guess that's that's what makes the community for them like yeah yeah and so i i don't know i can't i can't really knock them for that and there's you know there's just different there's tons of different varying opinions mm -hmm. so yeah i mean there's just so many like categories and everything so yeah and i i just i've kind of i've kind of switched like my interests too so mm -hmm. i can't yeah, I think over time, people's interests definitely shift. Uh, like, I know there's, like, probably going forward, like, a lot of, like, uh, like, even Omni admitted, like, he's probably not going to be making, like, a 
big serious video anymore because that's just you know time and mm -hmm. but oh yeah but like uh yeah you j you like i've i've learned to tolerate it not not saying that it's hard not to tolerate it but like it, it's <laughs> it's definitely it's definitely so, sort of frustrating sometimes uh when it's just like damn i just want to laugh at a video and there's not like a <laughs> single joke in an, in a video but yeah i don't know yeah and like i'm i mean i'm the same way i'm i've gotten to the point where where like i used to want to make like those big serious videos but now i just <laughs> i also don't have the time you know growing up have more responsibilities and everything mm -hmm. so I, I was making this stuff when i was like 17 you know still in still in high school wasn't even in college yet yeah that, that's the case for most people like uh you and i are the same age so i got into this shit when i was like 13 um <laughs> like jab he's only a few years older than me he got into it at like 2011 when he was like 14 or something like that but i think that definitely helps for your case because coming into the community already older helps out with your credibility and your matureness and everything. Like your first collab hosting being the Octagon collab, yeah, that's that's pretty fucking cool. Like I, I feel like I feel like you definitely couldn't have done that if you got into the community at like thirteen. You know you know what I mean? Like thirteen yeah. and then a few years later you're hosting the Octagon collab. No. That that probably wouldn't happen. Yeah, just that small year difference like it really does make a big difference in the end yeah yeah so are you are you doing what are you doing for school by the way are you doing uh like uh visual uh, stuff actually yeah that's a good question actually uh all of this ytp and v stuff and visual effects and everything like that that's just my hobby um i'm, I'm just going to school now for computer science and like my, my job right now is just uh basically system administrator database administrator programming web development so like all this stuff i've learned for ytpmv is just my hobby and so it's <laughs> like not really it has nothing to do with what i do in the real world which i always find kind of funny yeah and i don't really have a lot of people to <laughs> talk about that kind of stuff with except for the ytpmv community like yeah I can't really talk about YTP and V to people at work, especially when everyone at work is like 20 years older than me. They're like, what the heck is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just uh, the same, the same reaction every time. Like everyone just has a blank stare at it. And then they, <laughs> they just look at me and says, what, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried to get like your friends into YTP or show them or anything? Like, do they just kind of brush it off or, uh, yeah, I've tried, and yeah, like that, they find it interesting. That's about the only comment they'll get, really. <laughs> yeah, they just, they'll just say you you put all this time and effort into this. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you thought about like taking like some of this and making a career out of it and doing like uh like visuals I, honestly, or... I yeah, I I have uh, especially lately. Just because, um, like, I just get so deep into it sometimes with visuals, because you know that's what I mostly do is visuals. Um, and yeah, I I don't know. I'm I think I just need more. Uh, like, I want to do. I do want to do uh some freelance work in the future, maybe. Mm -hmm. But that's just another matter of like I already have a job, and so like. I don't really need to do freelance, but it's, but visuals, making visuals and visual effects is stuff I really enjoy. So it's something I would like to do because it's something I like doing maybe a little more than my current job. But yeah, it's just, it's just really a matter of time, honestly. And I, I do, I do have the opportunity for it, but yeah, I don't know. S still some, still something I'm, thinking about mm -hmm. and it reminds me of the conversation you had with jab on the other previous podcast is the same thing like like i would like to do it but 
Yeah. I, 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 I don't want to miss the opportunity for it because, like, I really haven't tried it and I feel like I should. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. We shall, we shall see. We shall see. Yeah. It's, it kind of sucks, but it's just like a, a matter of just people seeing what you do and thinking that it's cool and then, like, oh, I have the means to hire you for something, whether it be mm -hmm. music or YouTube or whatever. But, uh, yeah, definitely. Twitter helps out a lot with that and branching out oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Just sort sort of who I'm influenced by in like making videos. For sure. Uh so probably like my first early influences were obviously like Mountain Dew and basically everyone who worked on the Octagon collab, like Kinky Oats and Moy, Matrix Mario X, Beat Shoban. Uh and, like, it wasn't until recently, like, within the last year or so, is, like, when I first start seeing all these videos by, like, Faison. Like, man, Faison, I don't think I saw any of Faison's videos until 2018, which I think That's is, insane. like... That's insane. I know. Like, to <laughs> people have been the community so long, it's like, how the heck have you not seen Faison's videos? And, I, and I'm sure I have, but, like, once you... I don't, like once you see one video from him and you're like, all right, let's see his other videos. And it's like, man, these are like so good. And then that name just sticks in your head. And then, you know, you know you're excited yeah. to see like any video he puts out. Like, I don't even think I knew about um the YTPMV plus thing. Like I knew about that, but I didn't know the origin of it until like 2018 or late 2017, something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but like Faison, you especially, just and then Terrio, Terrio's videos I love so much. Terrible yeah. Terrio. Yeah. He because he's like um uh <laughs> kind of the hybrid video maker, not a hybrid collab, but he just makes like hybrid videos, like because he, he uses Gachi Muchi a lot, but then he'll just throw out some, like he makes some. He made one of the nine eleven footwork video, like just out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah it's, yeah like it's just crazy like and and that's kind of he was what mostly inspired me to make then uh the doing it video just like like that i made in like 12 hours or something like that was just on damn. the spot <laughs> damn that yeah well it was a good vid um, <laughs> thanks that's I, pretty fucking good yeah i appreciate it well i'm i'm flattered that i'm an influence because oh yeah yeah D just the like your videos are so unique, honestly. Like, just throwing some crazy sample at a at some like <laughs> drum and bass song. Like, what the heck? How do you even? <laughs> how do you even do this? How do you? Yeah, it's just you know, because uh, most of the songs uh, that most people use are like really um, uh, melody based. Like, they have a strong melody to it. But then yours is just like industrial noise it's like how do you make a video <laughs> with that and they and they, and like i think someone mentioned this to you at magfest like your videos like i can't really remember them that well but like they still like stick out in my mind like just that they exist like i'll just yeah and like vi your videos are like just so unique too like i'll see it and like yeah that's that's a soros video right there <laughs> well i'm glad i'm glad i got that under my belt and like uh do you think that you like do you think your videos also can be classified as like unique do you think you kind of stand out from the rest uh i mean that's up to everyone else but yeah i do you kinda, like to think <laughs> I, I yeah i mean everyone i'm sure likes to think that um i think my stuff uh besides ytpmv and otomad influencers like i feel like uh, my visual style is kind of influenced by a lot of Japanese motion graphics artists. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I like uh, I like using sentencing a lot usually too. But like I, I guess I don't feel like I have a lot of super out there qualities like you do, like in your videos <laughs> or like phasons think, or. Yeah. I think for for like most of us, it's just a product of just 
banging your head against the wall for so long making <laughs> videos and then finally you just start coming up with ideas and you just start thinking like that way like i i crave every single friday when i get a new release radar on spotify because <laughs> that means that i'll get new ideas for videos when i hear new music oh, oh that, is that how you come up with them a lot of the time yeah like oh basically goodness. every every song that i white to pmv is in my spotify library and i listen to pretty regularly <laughs> Oh, that's funny. You have all yeah. the, all these songs that you made YGPMVs with. Yeah, I don't I don't really know. I think I think it's just a just like being being in it, doing it for so long. Eventually, you just find your little your little happy spot and you just keep making that and then improving on it. Yeah, yeah, you do, do definitely like find like you get some sort of feel for what you like doing. I am kind of like that. Like the sources I like to use a lot are which is kind of my comfort. That's probably my comfort spot is just certain sources I like. So I like using Battle Dome. Um, Octagon is actually like a source where I don't know. I I like it, but it's not something I prefer to use just because it is kind of a hard source to work with. Yeah, so, and it's just been there. There's been so many jokes yeah, with it already. Yeah, it's hard it's, to come up with something original. Exactly, just beating a dead horse at that point, and that that is sort of the same way with a lot of the Japanese sources. But some of the Japanese sources have like so much material; it's like sky's the limit. Like mm. got gotchi muchi, especially. But like the only problem with that is like there's so many jokes that have already been made so it's like you do have to come up with a lot of your own and it's harder because a uh, language barrier mm -hmm. got got no japanese yeah yeah so is there anything coming up here in 2020 that you're excited about new year new decade you got big plans or is it just kind of just going along and uh man like Honestly, like after Octagon, I'm like I'm kind of take a break. But um, I have one video I'm working on. Uh, we'll see if I work on any collabs. I'm not sure if I will, but um, yeah. Like I feel like I feel like last year and this year, like uh, were the first years where I was like really into the community. So I'm like now I'm just like excited to see what you know other people make like. One one mm -hmm. thing I do hope for is, uh, the people working on collabs like making really high quality parts for them and everything. Like I hope those people will start to make their own videos. Like, I f like I feel like back in the day that's kind of how it used to be, was more people made their own videos instead of working on collabs so often. Which is at least in the side of the community I'm in. There's just a lot of people working on collabs and not making their own videos, which kind of just just disappoints me a little bit. Like, I just wish people made their own videos, solo videos, instead of collabs where they're just using an existing video, one that's already been made and remaking it, which I can appreciate. But, like, you know, just try to make your own stuff and then, like, then that can get into a collab, maybe. Stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I but, agree. yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm just looking forward to see what videos people make. That's, yeah, that's really about it. Yeah, me it. too. Me too. I I'm pretty excited. I'm glad that the Y2PMV is dead. Days are over. And <laughs> people are actually looking forward to this stuff. Hey, um, may, maybe we'll have. This will be the year of Y2PMV two. Fuck it, dude. Y2PMV <laughs> two. So you got anything else you want to plug? Uh, yeah. If you wanna find any of my content or anything i do you can just go to my website mmaker.pw that should have links to all my stuff on there so and yeah. a cool octagon collab like uh diary oh yep yeah. there's a you can read a little bit more about the history of how the octagon collab came to be like the last one and how that all worked out yeah uh oh also check out uh ytpmv screenbot Made by M Maker on Twitter. Oh yeah, there you go. Thanks that's for a, the that's, <laughs> thanks for the shout out. It's a it's a cool it's really really cool to scrub through and see a bunch of YTPMVs uh, every half hour. 
Uh, yep, there's a screenshot and then a video every half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and... That's that's funny how that picked up so fast. Oh yeah. Well, it's I mean it's pretty it's really cool. I'm glad I'm glad you made that because yeah. it's, it's just fun just to scrub through and then see it and. I mean, e even I'm just I've found videos through that. It's crazy. Yeah. There's just so many. There's over. I think right now the list it's pulling from it has over thirty three thousand videos. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, th thanks for having me on the podcast. I appreciate it. Fuck yeah, dude. Thank you for being on.